Why Come Japan? Welcome to another edition of Why Come Japan. I'm your host, Mr. Radri, and I join you today for a solo episode. Yes, uh, finally a solo episode, which probably seems like what? I haven't done one since the beginning of this year, and uh, what that beginning episode was. Uh, or, I mean, that, that episode at the beginning of this year was me setting goals for myself, and I haven't met any of those goals. I made the number one mistake of telling people my goals. So um, I learned the hard way because uh, I was definitely not motivated to do any of them. Uh, particularly that the biggest goal was I wanted to make a video blog every week or what people call a vlog. Um, yeah, that didn't happen, mostly because uh, I didn't want to burn myself out. So you never saw any of those. I know people like those. and I mean, I guess... I have to like them to a certain degree to make more of them, but uh, yeah, you uh, well, actually, let's let me talk about this a little bit. So, I've haven't made one of these solo episodes in a while, and I wanted to make one, you know, just to talk about what's been going on behind the scenes of here at Why Come Japan. Um, let's see, where do I start? Uh, I was going to make two other podcasts this year, but then I realized how much money it would cost. So then I just decided, why don't I just keep this one? And I just only talk about Japanese things. I was thinking about starting two other podcasts. You may, if you're following my handle on Twitter or Instagram, you may notice that I, uh, on, I, I uploaded this picture of rad culture this basically the show where i would um talk about pop culture and modern musings so it'd be like kind of critique kind of a uh a la la, you know chuck klosterman me talking about popular media a lot of it was japan centric some of it wasn't like i wanted to talk about things like rick and morty or tv shows i'm watching because you know uh when uh you basically what your content becomes is whatever it is that interests you. Um, I made one episode for, uh, okay, so I made two up two podcasts. The first one was called Rad Culture, where I talk about I would be I would critique modern media, and the second one was just going to be the Rad Re podcast, where it was just me talking like this or with my girlfriend talking like this, and, um. I wanted to put those on iTunes, you know, because if you just have a podcast on uh, YouTube, um, you're not going to get an audience for it. I mean, well, <laughs> it's been easier to get an audience on, let's say, YouTube than it is versus, uh, uh, no, excuse me, it's, it's easier to get an audience on iTunes or, I mean, any podcasting service than it is on YouTube because not everybody wants to see the live feed or wants to go to YouTube to listen to podcasts. I mean, maybe some people do, uh, especially if they're like, if there's a visual component to a uh, podcast. Uh, those who are watching the uh, visual feed right now will know I'm wearing a really heavy jacket and um, <coughs> I'm drinking tea, ginger lemon tea, because um, it's getting cold. And, you know, I got the... I got my Christmas balls out. Um, and what what I mean by that is the the balls on the tree, not uh, get your mind out of the gutter. Actually, probably just my mind's in the gutter. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. So I had these two podcasts, the Radry podcast and the Rad Culture podcast, which I made artwork for. Silly me. Um, so I wanted to put these up on iTunes and everything, but then I realized that. The only way to get an RSS feed is to pay money for it, essentially. I mean, yeah, there are there is a couple of workarounds where you can get an RSS feed for free, but it's much easier and much faster to just buy an RSS feed. And where I went to go buy that was over at SoundCloud, because SoundCloud was selling, uh, or not selling a RSS feed in particular. What they were selling was... Uh, you had to buy a pro account if you wanted to have a podcast with uh, unlimited space. And, you know, this podcast is generally, it's about 
two hours. No, no, no. It's about an hour, an episode. Um, anything longer than that's probably too long. And so I would put those up on there, but of course, you know, it would cost me $144 US uh, to basically get this RSS feed, you know, to plug into um, these other podcasts that I could create. So um, that ended up not happening. So because of that, uh, there not being a podcast of Rad Culture or the Rad Re podcast um, comes down to money now, which obviously made it made me kind of think, how is it that I could make money off of this thing? You know, because you think about the kind of media that's out there nowadays. Um, there are people like Twitch streamers. There are super chats. Um, a lot of YouTubers nowadays, they they make like they have a merchandise store. I'm not sure how Japan vloggers. I don't really think there's many that I mean, the only person I can really think of, or I guess two people or I guess maybe the top tier people like abroad in Japan or the anime man or uh, I mean, others that are associated with Japan, but aren't in Japan, like ones like ones that I really like, like Gaijin Goomba, uh, who make content about Japan all the time. And uh, it's mostly all just YouTube content. And when I say YouTube content, I mean, that's like videos that are made to be digested with the span of like 10 minutes. And that's uh, something that's really well organized. So because of that, um, I just, oh, well, like as I said at the beginning, I decided I didn't want to make these other two podcasts unless I actually have the money for it. So you may see me doing some Twitch streaming or finding a way how I could sort of monetize this the right way. And, uh, I don't know. I don't want to put on advertising because advertising is annoying um, and it's uh, inhuman. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'm not sure what it is about ads that everybody hates. Maybe it's just because uh, we're getting tired of people selling. Maybe maybe it's the equivalent of like being in a foreign country where they have all those touts trying to sell you shit all the time. That stuff is just so massively annoying. So, like, maybe that's why. Maybe that's why everyone hates advertising. So, therefore, I was thinking maybe I'd find some way in how to monetize my online life since this is the wave of the future. This is the Internet's the new way to make money. Um, not particularly money that's, like, big money. You definitely can't make big money on a platform like this. Um, but I guess, like, chump change, I guess you would call it. Uh because I see some streamers, and I'm not sure, like, where the line goes when it comes down to e-begging or when it comes down to, like, people legitimately wanting to give you money for entertaining them. Because, I mean, if you think about it, we have no problem giving money to people who entertain us. Um, we have no problem giving, I don't know, I, I gave, like, over $40 to uh, a movie theater just to go see, fuck, what was it? I can't even remember what movie it was. Uh, well, it wasn't Joker. I didn't see that. Um, I guess it was Endgame, Avenger, Avengers. I really don't go to the movies anymore because it always feels like such an event. So, um, that's one of the reasons why you don't see, uh, me talking about going to the movies or I guess if I'm going to watch a movie and I, I talk about it on Twitter, it's because, um, <laughs> it's, because it's what something I'm watching at home or some television show I'm trying to catch up on. Um, Simon Ochanama in the chat says, this could explain why my show show ads don't get many views. Yeah, I mean, advertising is not particularly fun to watch unless it's like quirky. Like, I mean, you can like go on YouTube here and you can look up Japanese advertising uh, an hour or Japanese advertising from 2018. So, um... Yeah, bear with me. My throat's killing me. Um, so, yeah, you have a lot of these uh, ads that aren't exactly welcome. Um, Simon O'Chanam in the chat says, well, that was $40 well spent. Um, well, what are you talking about? Anyway, uh, yeah, so I spent $144 on my uh, 
uh, that RSS, or I guess I should just call it a pro account on SoundCloud to push the podcast over on PC devices like Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Uh, what was the other one? There's like another big one. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. Um, so now you can go listen to those if you're a PC user. Um, based upon what I've seen the download so far is nobody's really downloading it from those PC, uh, what is it, Dev- not devices, uh, platforms. So I guess if you're a fan of the show and you like listening to stuff on the go, then that's where you need to go if you haven't heard it here yet. Um... Yeah, I should probably, sh- for those who are just joining the show for the first time, Simon Nochanima is a, a a viewer of mine who, uh, I've actually been on the show, and he's been on this show, who he often makes live stream shows where he just randomly brings people into his living room. <laughs> that sounds kind of wrong. <laughs> to perform a John Wayne Gacy, no. <laughs> he brings people into this living room to have a nice chat. The old chats. Um... Oh, Simon O'Chanum in the chat saying, you spent $40 on a movie you can't remember. No, it was Avengers Endgame. That was definitely it. And every time going to the movie theaters in Japan, it's always an event. It never feels like something I can casually do anymore. Uh, Because, you know, it's like, do you want to see the movie in 3D? Do you want to see it with... Well, I guess particularly in Japan, do you want to see it in 3D? Do you want to see it with subtitles? Do you want to see it dubbed? I mean, who wants to see it dubbed? But... um, but yeah, basically what I was going back to saying about money, spending, using money to buy uh, a movie, it's the same kind of thing with entertainment. Like m- maybe after a while, after you make a lot of uh, content, a lot of people kind of feel obligated to, um, you know, give you some money for entertaining them as well. Maybe that's why people give out Super Chat money. That's why they give out um, uh, money to Twitch streamers uh basically and you know i was just sort of thinking about this myself and trying to set something else for myself you know because eventually um you know memento mori i'm going to eventually die and i kind of want to be remembered for something other than just i was that guy who did a live show on uh, youtube sometimes and i never made any i never really became anything Uh, so uh, making something putting something out there like making a book or I'm not going to really go into apparel because my show is just doesn't have the numbers for that kind of uh, that kind of thing yet. Uh, um, so as the evolution of this show can cons- uh, progresses, um, I'm going to constantly try to figure out new ways and how to, uh, you know, uh, make it more of a career because I mean, I think it can be done because i mean everybody always complains on the internet about oh there's no money in the internet there's nothing you can do and i mean yeah you can make a little chump change here and there but um and yes it is very hard to grow a brand nowadays especially because everybody considers the internet to be like the wild west uh of you know uh what do you call it this information superhighway so uh, going forward, basically what this show is, it's just going to be, uh, there's going to be, I probably shouldn't talk about this considering that I made that last video where I was talking about goals and I didn't reach any of them, but um, I feel okay about talking about this because I'm trying to still do this weekly and you've, and you've seen that I've, it's very simple for me to make these episodes and it doesn't take too much uh cerebralness that's probably not even a word it doesn't take too much brain power to make a show like this um so the, you're probably not going to see it disappear anytime soon and i mean i have some guests lined up for uh this month and next month this is so uh but i want to keep those a secret so uh I, th- I think it's better there was once a writer named william goldman um he died i think this year maybe what was the last year i can't remember um he wrote a book called uh adventures in the screen trade i think it was that one he made two that i really love there's that one and then there's another book that's a sequel to that one called um which lie did i tell 
Um, I really love both of them a lot. Uh, if you ever get a chance to read one of those, I highly recommend it. I mean, maybe you're not interested in Hollywood and the the system, quote unquote. But it's an interesting, like, little dissection into, like, how to write stories and how to produce stories and um, how entertainment is made and who's popular and who's not. Um, but anyway, uh, William Goldman once said that the number one thing he learned is never tell anybody what you're working on. So, because uh, immediately when you start to tell people what you're working on, then everybody starts asking you, hey, how was that one project coming? How's that one project coming? Like... Um, fuck. I mean, uh, I've worked on two projects, two film projects, The Republican and Daikonashi, and they have not been released, mostly because I, I'm just, I don't know if you've ever written a poem, or you've written a book, or you've written a story of some kind, and you look back at it, and you're like, man, this is just awful, and you probably care about how you're portrayed in, you know, real life, so, um, I mean, in reality, probably, I mean, the internet, in a weird way, doesn't feel like reality, but it's starting to become reality, which is a very strange uh, thing. Forgive me, I'm not, I'm a little under the weather, I'm a little sick, so if I use really weird words to describe things, then, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> or give us five stars on Amazon, even though this podcast isn't on there. So, what was I talking about? Oh, um, yeah, so I have pro. I, I was thinking about doing this show where it's not going to be always, uh, I was going to kind of switch it up a bit, and um, you'll see it. I'm not going to exactly talk about it. Um, you'll see how it changes. Uh, I, you know, I kind of hate these shows where they're sort of like, where they're always like, yes, just wait until you find out. It's like, just start the damn thing, you know? <laughs> but I, I I really like doing these uh, solo episodes because, you know, it kind of helps you clear your head and it helps you kind of, you know, recollect what it is you've, uh, you've created in a way. Oh, that actually reminds me. Um, Simon Ochanama. I did not promote the uh, this live stream at all. So I just kind of just pushed the switch to say, turn on live stream. I didn't put on my Facebook. I didn't put on my Twitter. I'm going to switch things up a bit. Uh, actually, I can't talk about this because I already did it. I'm going to not tell people about the live show. If people want to come to the live show, they'll just show up. Um, otherwise, I think it's easier to push my material when it's finished. And so therefore, I have a product already. Um, because sometimes like when you get to a live show, maybe you get in there too late. I mean, there is always the, uh, I don't know, the FOMO, the, the, uh, simultaneousness of it. Like you feel like you're a part of the show, but if, uh, my followers really like something like that, they can just, you know, follow the channel and, or if they really want it, they can just request it from me. Cause, uh, well, I guess it's pretty hard to request something when they don't know who the new guests are. Um, I, I I don't know. It's kind of a tricky thing because I'm I was trying to like figure out what it is and how to, um, for lack of a better word, my plan of attack, quote unquote. I don't know. I I feel like the live stream stuff is kind of, it feels rather stale. I mean, some people like showing up to live shows, I guess. Um. Well, then again, sometimes when I there are live shows, I don't really have the. Well, sometimes I have the patience to watch really long shows, especially if it's like a guest I really like or one I want to listen to. Um. It is a little hard to decide how it is I'm going to uh, promote this show. I guess with a lot of things, a lot of it's just experimenting. Um. Perhaps you're familiar with. Fred Rogers, the guy who uh, had a show called, wait, is it called that? It's a Wonderful D Day in My Neighborhood? Is that just the name of the movie? Anyway, um, if you're, uh, what is it, over 30 or uh, maybe a little under 30, perhaps you remember of a, a, a little, a real old guy on TV named Fred Rogers who used to wear card hearts and 
Wait, was it car? It was a cardigan. Excuse me, not card hearts. That's I think that's a brand. Um, he used to wear cardigans, and he always used to take off his shoes, and it was like going to Grandpa's house. And Grandpa always gave you some some slick advice, you know. And he was always very patient and calm, and you know, he's kind of like what you would hope you grow up to be when you get to be an old man. Um, <laughs> you know, because I worry sometimes that I'm gonna get old. And I'm going to be like one of these cranky old men that, uh, I guess that in Japan they call them Rogai. That's, I, I'd hope that's not me. I don't know. Uh, I do get upset about stupid things sometimes. Like, what do they call those? Microaggressions? Um, but I guess what they say is you shouldn't let those bother you. Anyway, Fred Rogers. Fred Rogers is a, uh, he used to have a TV show where he talked about... And he, he, it was for kids, and, like, he talked about very complex subjects, uh, things like, <laughs> I don't know why I'm laughing about it, like, having little puppets saying, <laughs> things like, Daddy, what does assassination mean? Like, Daddy, why does everything die? You know, <laughs> kind of h hard topics um, that we really don't have answers for in life. Um, anyway, there's one particular episode where there's where Fred Rogers draws a picture of a house and it's not a very good picture. It's horrible. It's a horrible picture. And then he says something like, you know, I'm just making this, I'm making it. And you know, at the end of the day, I feel proud of myself for making something, you know, it's not great. I didn't like what I made, but at the end of the day, I made something. And, um, I think what that means is, is that, well, let me tell you a little story about myself over this past year oh, does anybody hear that it means it's five o'clock <laughs> here in japan i don't know if you can hear those bells anyway so um fred rogers uh basically oh yeah i started this twitter account where i just started i'm not gonna i'm so embarrassed to even admit what it is so i'm not gonna tell people what it is um if you can find it congratulations but i've pretty much hit, hid everything where this secret art account is that I've made. Where I, I started making this art that I know a lot of Japanese people like, and I started throwing it up on Twitter just to see what kind of reaction it would get. And, you know, I went through and I liked a bunch of posts, and I retweeted a bunch of posts, and I, I made some of my own. And in a real weird way, it really felt like art therapy in a lot of ways like it really brought back the enjoyment of creating something and i guess the thing with uh this 430 inch yes 430 i'm sorry they always play those bells if you can hear them i don't know if I, i'm not listening i can't hear it on the other end but if you heard that they always play it when it's about sunset uh, i don't know correct me if i'm wrong um so anyway i made this twitter account and uh it's become relatively popular i'm worried that's going to start becoming more popular than uh my radry account here i mean it's nowhere near the numbers that i have on this account but um yeah it's i don't know it it really feels a lot better doing something that you love opposed to something that what the internet tells you you need to make uh, i feel like a lot of people are kind of lost nowadays especially on the internet where they feel like they're kind of their lives are dictated by the zeitgeist you know they can only really appeal to the zeitgeist you know because at the end of the day we really need to make make money aka make bread uh you know to to live um i guess the greatest metaphor for money is always money is like the fire inside your body you know, you can't have too little of it, and you, and I guess what you can have too much of it, but, well, like if you're the one percent or something, um, but yeah, you can't live without money in a lot of regards, and like especially the society we live in. So, um, going forward, that's what this show is going to look like. Um, I'm glad I told you. I don't know if you, uh, if you liked this, if you like these little chats that we have in front of the curtains next to this dinky Christmas tree and the white tree that isn't real. I should put Christmas lights on it. Give it more of a Charlie Brown Christmas look to it. Um, 
be sure to throw us five stars. You know, I always hated people who always, like, say, subscribe to our channel, or, you know, like this and share it on Facebook and give it to your mom and, and take it to the deli and show it to your your friend Frank. Um, I, I kind of hate that because, I, I mean, I did that myself, you know, that's because that's what the zeitgeist tells you you need to do. Um, whereas, like, people like Tokyo Kuni would always say things at the end of his videos where, he, or not the end of his videos, he would say to me in interviews, he's like, I've never hoard for a subscription. I've never asked people to do it. And I mean, yeah, there is kind of, uh, you do kind of look up to them for not selling out like that. But at the same time, you know, uh, <laughs> if you want to sort of make this into, or push the aggregate, quote unquote, you know, so you're content gets noticed or you know the number account goes up because uh numbers are very important i mean the internet loves numbers i recently just made a tweet over on twitter that's gotten a lot of traffic like a lot of responses and i ranked the worst coffee because there's a lot of bad coffees in japan like they get uh they get the style down of the coffee shop and like the coffee uh atmosphere or the coffee house atmosphere like perfect to like the tea but it's always like the coffee is always just average it's so average it's so average i forget every single coffee i've ever had in japan i mean like i can remember the taste of some of them and that's mostly the brands um there's like one coffee in kagoshima that i really remember well that was absolutely delicious i mean it was like the only coffee it's like i've never wanted it would be a sin to put sugar cream in it. Um, so, I mean, it was a really popular tweet. And I can tell people really want, like stuff like that. So I imagine, uh, well, I imagine you'll see content like, oh, I just gave out what I'm going to work on. Oh, well, well, you heard it here. I'm not sure. Maybe that coffee video is never going to happen because I just talked about it. But, <coughs> uh, uh, man. Yeah, so it's just kind of like topics like that, and I really enjoyed talking about it. And just, I've noticed that certain topics click with some users and some don't. Like, if I start talking about Avengers Endgame, nobody's going to want to listen to this. Because I guess everybody knows me for me living in Japan. They don't want to hear about my opinions about um, comic books, even though I really like com. Even though I don't really like comic books. I mean, I, I would like to talk about what's popular. Um... But, I mean, I, I may well just may well make a video that's uh, not related to Japan just because I want to. But we'll see. I don't know. Um, yeah, so the, the example with that coffee thing, maybe that's the sort of content you'll see. I don't know. I'm going to just uh, be elusive about it because this may happen or it may not happen. Uh, so let's see. What else? Um uh yes yeah, the end of the year um i'm going back to the united states for uh for um, a eulogy basically my uh stepbrother died um of cardiac arrest uh well i mean is he died of that because uh well he doesn't talk so it was really hard for us to tell that he was sick or he was in pain um and, also, I should probably mention that this stepbrother of mine is has the month of uh, has the mind of a five month year old baby, and he's incredibly stubborn. So, I mean, and uh, uh, well, that revealing too much of my personal life. Uh, I'm going to be going back to the states to deal with that. I mean, uh, I guess death is obviously something you really need to deal with. Um, you can't go on ignoring it because uh, eventually, uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm, I've always just been told, like, when a death happens, you need to deal with it in the right way, not just deny that it even happened. Um, another one of my friends also from high school died. He was hit by a car. Uh, maybe I might go back to deal with some of that if I can. Um because obviously I wasn't in the United States when this happened, and it's physically impossible for me to go to the funeral when it's halfway across the other side of the world. Um, yeah, 
2019. I guess uh, we, I probably won't make another one of these solo episodes again for a while. Uh, it's been a pretty good year. Uh, I got pretty good guests. I didn't make that much. I think I only got like around, what is it, 20 guests this year. Um, I guess my biggest guest for the year was Mark Cavazos, the one who got arrested and put in prison because he had a really interesting story. Uh, I guess second most popular or third. It's hard to rank them, really, because um, I don't want to make the other guests jealous. Um, I'm talking about numbers or reactions or responses, I guess, uh, because really, I I love every interview I give. I mean, I want to make it, I always try to get something out of each interview. So it feels like it's, I'm progressing with my life or progressing with their life in some way where it doesn't just feel like we're here talking about, well, I guess a lot of it is just us talking about our jobs sometimes. Um, which can be interesting. So, uh, yeah. So, I mean, there was Mayday Son, and then there was also uh, Patrick St. Michelle, which were great episodes. Um, there, there are others from this year that were great. Um, maybe it was just the timing. Maybe I... Because, like, there's a few guests, ones that are going to be on the show soon, that, you know, I, I always could have interviewed them at any time, but I just sort of felt like, now it's not a good time. I have nothing to ask them and nothing to really say. So I really feel like sometimes it's all about uh, the right moment. Like, when's the right moment to ask the guest to be on your show? Or um, does it feel right? Because, like, I've had, I've thought about having my girlfriend as a guest a couple of times, but a lot of it is just we have nothing to talk about. So I guess when the time is right, we'll uh, do an interview. I don't know. We'll see. I'm not sure. <laughs> maybe the only thing you'll get from this episode is I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Actually, there you go. Let me know if you're listening. Just go down in the comments or give us five stars or whatever you want to do. Push whatever buttons YouTube offers you or iTunes, or Google Podcasts, or any of these services, and just write down, I don't know, maybe. And I guess, uh, uh, I guess I gotta end on that note. Um, let's see. Anything else on my mind? How long have I been going for? Uh, let's see. I've been going for about 30 minutes. Oh, not too bad. Uh, yeah, so, uh, if anybody is still around, I guess people will still be around, not going anywhere, uh, unless 2020 is the end of the world, but we've predicted the end of the world, like, what, 500 times, and it still hasn't happened? Like, what's his name? The guy who wrote Watchmen, the comic book, Alan Moore, I think he said the world was going to end in 2017. I guess... Trump became president, maybe that kind of feels... Or I guess Trump became president, then Brexit happened. That kind of felt uh, shitty. So uh, maybe that's what he meant? I don't know. Uh, Simon Nochanama, when Kiki was on my show, her view count was only slightly less than that of when Eric Surf 6 was on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I want something to actually talk about. Like something where I actually have a point to what it is I'm saying. Um, I don't want to just sound like a bunch of hot air because I, my girlfriend has to deal with this new person at her work who she says talks a lot like me, but she says I'm better than him because at least I have a point to what it is I'm saying, even though I kind of, I love to just, it, what seems like ramble on, but there is a point to this and I love to digress, but there is always a point, um, I don't know if when you get older, you start noticing all these white hairs in your head. And I've told her that every single white hair in your head is from this person. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So remember that for the future. If you're going bald, um, uh, something's stressing you out. I'm not better. I don't know what else to say. Um, there's not much you can really do, I guess, except manage your stress. Anyway, uh, all right then. Uh, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, 
Uh, I probably, you won't see, maybe, oh, okay, so I guess some things to prepare to watch out for, uh, even though I told you I didn't want to talk about what I'm working on, uh, there are some things I want to tell you to watch out for, because I'm most likely going to throw them up, because they take really little effort on my part, um, what, watch out for, oh, I guess, I guess you don't have to watch out for it, but the, I was going to say, there's going to be a couple of lost episodes thrown up on the show, because I've recorded a lot of interviews, and for some reason they just didn't feel right when I upload, when I finish them, because of either A, of timing, or, uh, uh, what is it, strategy, so, yeah, uh, well, yeah, you'll see those in probably January when nobody watches anything, or, or at least they tell you nobody watches anything, I don't know what it is, it's always in January, I always have the most time to do creative work. I have so much time. Maybe it has something to do with me not wanting to go outside. That's probably part of it. Um, anyway, so with uh, that being said, uh, until then, I'm Radri, and see ya. Bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye! Bye-bye!